Alrighty, now the header is done, we're gonna move on to the child favorite. Pooh! That is Jet Jaguar. Funny enough, if you all didn't know, Jet Jaguar was actually meant to be in a solo movie, but the directors thought that he was not going to be able to carry his own movie, so that's why they added King... not King, Godzilla to it, basically. And as you can tell, he's not really able to fucking hold his own here! Ugh. Fuck off. He's got good motion though, I'll give him that. Very good motion. Takes a while for him to change size again. There was one where he was able to actually turn bigger. I can't remember if it's in this one or the other one. Ooh, backflip. See now, if he did stuff like that in Godzilla vs. Megalon, it would definitely have been a better idea. Look at that drop kick. Oh. Don't get me wrong, Jet Jaguar is easily a better fighter than certain ones that you see. Yeah, Jet Jaguar originally was actually designed by a child from a school in Japan. They basically offered any child the opportunity to have their own, you know, robot style protagonist being one of their films basically. Which is nice, I'm sure the kid loved the idea of being able to have his own creation there. I kind of want to look the kid up, see if he's actually, um, see how he's doing, if he's, since he's a little bit older. If he actually still appreciates that they did that for him, you know. I will say definitely the plot in that one was very weird. And that was when um, the studio was trying to like save money, I think. That's when they used like different clips from older films. Because like, there's this one scene where Megalon actually like sends his drill hand towards like the army to destroy a plane. And you can easily tell that it's Jet... Uh, that it's Gigan's claw. Because if you didn't know, Gigan is actually in that film with them. Because apparently Megalon's not good enough to just destroy Japan by himself. They have to bring in Gigan as well. This map, I don't know why. It's very interesting. How damaging this is. Let me see if I can do this. That's the wrong one. I just thumbs up. <laughs> I give him a thumbs up. Uh, I tell you what though, that film spawns like the greatest cheese fest moment of any Godzilla film it was the drop kick oh I thought Godzilla vs Astro Monster Victory Dance was cheesy this one really takes the cake it really takes the cheesecake not only does Godzilla like do the stupid ass fucking <laughs> drop kick once where he's like balancing on his tail and he's like flying through the sky towards Megalon being held by Jet Jaguar, he does it twice, basically. It's so fucking good. Ah, oh, you just do it normally, okay. Whee! 
We're not going to explain how he can fly as well. And apparently he was able to just bypass like all of those controls that they were using on him in that film. So we just kind of like yada yada how he can like control himself without being controlled later on. And no, I cannot remember how you get bigger in this one. Can't remember if you press X or double tap something again. It's been a while since I've played Jet Jaguar really. I have no idea what the thumb up does. Apparently I'm indestructible. Power of friendship. <laughs> Well, as long as he's not able to damage me, then it's fine, you know. Whee! Well, I caught him. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> it's pretty fun. Why am I going the other way? My controls were inverted there for a second. That was weird. No, not the spinny finger stuff. Oh. Bitch, take my drop kit. Yeah, I'm going backwards again. Why is it inverted? My controls are inverted. What the hell? Oh, he just caught me with that one. Thank god he turns around normally, because if he doesn't turn around, it just takes you forever to get s to get face right again. But I kind of like it that you have very little control of your movements, because again, you're massive, you know, you're going to be a little bit slower than usual. I just love the whole idea of the diorama sets as well. Which is what kind of really bums me out when the Millennium series came around, they tried to go into more CG. And yes, the CGI was not really as good as it was back in the day, like in the early 2000s. I mean, they tried, but honestly, I feel like the diorama sets and the suits were a better option for like those early days because they were just so iconic and timeless. But the suit actors, they went through so much turmoil. Like, there was an accident one time, well, a few times, actually, where um, a couple of the actors were either dehydrated or they nearly drowned or they were set on fire. Very dangerous. So maybe it is a good thing that they kind of stopped with the whole suits fiasco, really. But ever since then... Japan have gotten into making newer films and oh my god minus one Jesus you should all watch minus one when you get the opportunity it is one of if not one of the greatest Japanese made Godzilla films of all time yes it kind of like repeats the same story arc of like oh Godzilla's created by you know bombing and all that but, but this one is kind of unique he's kind of a creature that's already existing and then the bomb kind of hits him and it turns him a little bit more into what he is known for basically which is kind of strange they kind of don't like talk about how he came to be before the actual um blast i think that might no 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 i think he was actually created by the hiroshima bombings and then when they did the um testing in america in the pacific i think after the second world war that's when he then got the buff i think so no no he was created the same way but they just beefed him up again after certain testing so yeah also it's one of the first godzilla films that really makes you um really care for like the um people in the art like how in the original, how it was dark, it was meant to be dark, basically. Like, you actually saw the deaths that were occurring, basically, with the people that Godzilla affected, in a certain sense. It's not like Hollywood today, where everything is just so woke. That it's just unbearable to watch, basically. Like, not everything has to be about virtue signaling, in a certain sense. 
and you barely care for the people you're watching really in most Hollywood films now these days because it just doesn't feel real. Whereas in Minus One you actually got character developments, actual like basis for you to actually care for the characters really and it was really eye-opening how wonderful the character arcs were especially with the main protagonist how he like suffers with um you know um the whole idea of cowardice in a certain sense being like you know wanting to protect himself and wanting to not be in the war or sacrifice himself as a kamikaze pilot basically and it also tells a story about how he really got into um, being a father basically and taking care of this young girl with this woman who he grew to love basically it's so lovely the characterization is fantastic honestly and by the end of the film he actually does get some closure in a certain sense it's just so nice to see that it's no longer like you know oh let's just put men down or like shit on men because it's funny you know like the shit you say in western hollywood films all the time it's so fucking boring to see that shit all the time you know it's aggravating but no in this it felt like a proper film where you could root for not only the characters that you're seeing but also hope that they do well with what they do really you know it's a good film i have to say one of the best godzilla films i've seen in a long while Hey, if any film can put Hollywood to shame, then go right ahead, you know? The reason why this attack is not working is because Martha is floating. There's not much I can do here against her. All I can do is just drop kick and hope that... Oh, I know. I know, I know, I know. Come at me. She came at me. Can't hit me when I'm the size of a pea, dear. Jesus Christ. Fly! You're not the only one who can fly. Body slammer! <laughs> I'm sorry, Mothra. I'm sorry, dear. Oh. I'm always one for the floofy design. Ten minutes! That is slow. I mean, it's not as bad as Mechagodzilla. Jesus Christ, I'm not looking forward to Mechagodzilla. He is a very slow and ambling kaiju. We'll finally get to face Godzilla. Thumbs up, good sir. Yeah, the drop kick is the only staggering thing, really. I love Godzilla's theme. It is one of the most timeless theme songs you can ever hear. And to hear that song in, like, Minus One play through certain sections, it was really good. It felt like the orchestra really kicked up a notch when they played his theme it felt really good very passionate if there's one thing the Japanese do well they do their creation Godzilla with pride especially like with Shin Godzilla I kind of like how they kind of switch the roles in a certain sense where Godzilla wasn't like this malevolent creature that was just created out of like radiation and hate He's just an animal in a certain sense and he's scared, you know, so of course he's going to like attack and defend himself like he's an animal, you know. And the idea of him being able to evolve past the point of where he could like took over humanity is a frightening concept. Imagine if he had actually gotten that far to do that. Shin Godzilla could have easily been the best and most powerful kaiju if they just let him evolve in a certain sense. He could have been a really big force to be reckoned with really. 
it kind of like puts the argument of like who's the greatest kaiju of all and Shin is definitely up there if you let him evolve in a certain sense burning Godzilla he's gone thermonuclear he's got heartburn holy shit Bitch! Oh god, no! Don't do me like this! Don't do me like this! No! No, no, no! You don't have to do this! You don't have to do this! No, don't do this! No, don't do this, Godzilla! No, don't do this, Godzilla! Don't do this! <laughs> I've somewhat got behind him, but he's gonna... Yep. Yeah, he's just... Yeah, I'm gonna get behind him. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna Oh my god, he fucking blasted me! No! Stop, you fucking whore! Uh, uh. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I need to move. Move! Fuck! <laughs> Run! Run away! Run away! Run away! <laughs> no! Don't do this! No, don't do this! It's basically the dark and gritty fucking millennium version of Godzilla versus the child friendly <laughs> Jack Jack, but no! Stop! I'm trying to fucking defend myself here, you bastard! That's actually a funny fact as well. No matter how useless the army is in every Godzilla film, only in the recent Millennium series have they actually been poignant and actually effective. Like from the creation of like Gotengo to like Super X and Super X2 and Super X3 to actually using a freezing ray to s like stop Godzilla from going thermonuclear and actually destroying Destroyer basically. Yeah, for once, it's not Godzilla that bodies a kaiju, it's actually the army that does something effective. Oh, he did the blast thing, nice. I'm so gonna fucking die. I need to run. No! Oh, I just saved myself, I need to move! Yeah, fuck off you spamming bitch! That's not the best position. I'm right in front of him again. Fuck you! Fuck up, bitch! I'm gonna fuck you up! Oh god, I'm right in front of him again. No, 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 no. Yes, do it while I'm... Okay. I'm not letting you do that again, you brick. Oh. Jesus, Thermonuclear Godzilla is definitely up there with the most powerful breath. Jesus. <sighs> 15 minutes total. That is bad. That is bad. I think it's mostly just due to the fact that his moves are so time-consuming to pull off effectively. Yeah, that final stage was the longest one at three minutes. <laughs> Mecha Godzilla. Probably my favorite version of Mecha Godzilla because you can't beat the original. And the 1975 version of the Showa era Mecha Godzilla is just so timeless. And I loved the Showa era Godzilla in that film because he just looks so unique. Godzilla fights like a boxer in that film as well. It was quite nice to see the fight styles change from like early wrestling. Why are you running from me? You know what? Take this. <laughs> and that's another thing. His head spins in the first and the original one, but it's only the second film in 1976 or 75. I, think. I can't quite remember the year. It was... um. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 where his head spins and Godzilla removes his head and he has like an ability where he can like fire 
another beam at him. Whereas in the first one, although he can spin his head, he, Godzilla just like cuts his head off by pushing his head too far and it decapitates him. And I'm thinking, hang on, where's the consistency here? It takes so long for me to use my ability. Look at that. Proper pyrotechnics. That's the sweeping one. How do I use the... Uh... How do I use my finger rockets? Rainbow. Taste the rainbow, motherfucker. <sighs> oh, so good. So good. Ah, oh, Marvel Live Lava. I haven't faced you in a while. I love his arm tats as well. I believe they're meant to be MG, but you can't really see them on here very well. Very smart from Mothra, she moved. And I grew up with the like very crappy American dubs as well. So you can imagine how cheesy they must have been to hear in dubs basically. I want to do that someday, I want to try and find the entire series but in Japanese. To actually hear the differences between them really. Because believe you me, the Japanese acting far superior to any, like, crappy American dubbing as well. Far superior. I remember the entire King Ghidorah song as well. In Japanese. I'm so glad they actually kept that in Japanese in that film, because it was really memorable. How does it go? It's like, um... Kuraiuno... Dori no kiyaru Asana kitara Emu ninkana Sanete hoshi no Watashi no sisa Yashi no hama me 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 te iu no sisa He's kicking my ass. <laughs> it's such a fucking rememberable song. Like, I literally sang it everywhere I went. In school, all the teachers kept saying, like, what's he singing? What are you singing? <laughs> and I'm like, Godzilla. I'm like, I'm singing Godzilla when I was young. Because I didn't, like, understand that it was for, like, King Ghidorah at the time. I just thought, oh, Godzilla. Yeah, can you fuck off, Batro? Fuck's sake. <laughs> Eat shit! <laughs> Rainbow! <laughs> oh, he's just so menacing there in the smoke, isn't he? Ah, the rematch. Angira. You couldn't beat me in Godzilla form. How can you handle me now? Oh, that's a good start. Sorry, Mark, I've got to destroy your beloved kaiju. Yeah, Anguirus got completely screwed over in that film. It was nice that he was able to put up a fight for a little bit, but my god, they really fucking made Mechagodzilla body him. It's such a shame as well, because in Raids Again, he was actually decent. Anguirus was a worthy opponent for Godzilla, basically. So what a great honour it was for Anguirus to basically be the second kaiju to be in... Um, <clears throat> Well, he was the first rival, basically, for Godzilla, really, so he always has that place as 
Godzilla's um, equal in a certain sense. They say how, yeah, like King Kong was like the only kaiju to beat him, basically, but mm, I don't know about that. I feel like if they'd have let these two fight, I swear Anguirus could have probably had a good, good kickstart on Godzilla, basically. managed to stop me. I kind of like that they've given him a bit of a dad bod at the belly area, you know? Kind of kind of looks a bit chunky at the front. <laughs> He's not as, like, masculine toned as, like, Kiryu is, basically. by Angus for the second time at least, in, at least I didn't break your jaw this time good lord I could talk about Godzilla all day honestly let me talk about Godzilla and I'd be a happy man damn that Godzilla We'll see how much of a match you are from Mecha Godzilla. Not much, it seems. That whole storyline in Mecha Godzilla made no sense as well, because if they could make Godzilla, like if they can make Mecha Godzilla as powerful as he already was when he faced Godzilla, then why did they need? Was it Doctor Mifumi? No, that was the original Doctor. I couldn't quite remember his name, but yeah. Why do they need that professor to, like, create Mecha Godzilla again? Couldn't they have just, like, remade him from scratch? I don't understand why they needed him to make Mecha Godzilla, like, repaired again. Maybe he had a better understanding of, like, the Space Titanium, and yes, that's what they call the metal, Space Titanium. And what did the guy say afterwards in the American dub? He said, um, could it be from outer space? Yes, that's why it's called Space Titanium, you fucking moron. <laughs> I mean, that's more on the actor's fault, like, who voiced him, because I'm thinking, what, what, why would you say that? Why would you write that, you know? It's so stupid. <laughs> but that's why I love the Godzilla films, because they're so cheesily bad. <laughs> so I have to thank the American dubs for that stupidity. <laughs> this material can only be Space Titanium. Space Titanium? You mean it's from outer space? Honestly. I do honestly think you're a match for me, I'm sorry. You are no match for me. I am chunky. My punches are like rocks. Rainbow! <laughs> Rainbow! <laughs> Victory! I'm just trying to think, really, if... Mechagodzilla is even worth doing because he's kind of got the same techniques really. I'll leave that for you guys to decide. So, I will see you in the next episode. This is fun. I want to continue this until we at least get everyone done basically because I've got a lot to talk about with Godzilla, you know. So, I hope you guys are enjoying it and if you're not, I don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> Have a lovely day, lads and ladies. We use an Earth man that knows space technology.